Well, plans to crack down on shoplifters with facial recognition technology has been announced by the Met Police this morning. Yeah, it follows a recent spike in retail crime, with the co-op claiming a loss of £33 million in the first six months of this year, thanks to thieves. A Halfers manager says he was verbally abused after asking shoplifters to leave the store, then attacked. In this CCTV, we can see the end of the altercation where Marty Scott tried to intervene, uh, was pushed to the floor. I think it's coming up in a moment. He was then kicked in the head and in the chest. Uh, it, it's pretty brutal to watch, isn't it, as it unfolds, just grim. And unfortunately, not long after the attack, mm. Marty suffered a stroke. Marty and his wife, Kim, are here with us this morning. Thank you both for being here. I can't imagine, Marty, how difficult it must be mm. for you and Kim as well. Watching that footage for us, when Kate and I first saw it, we just really struck by mm. the brutality of mm. that moment. Um, so thank you for letting us share it, because I think it's important to be able to yeah. put it out there. And I know it's not comfortable for the two of you mm. to watch. Let's start with how you're feeling, Marty. How is life for you um, right now? It's, it's not good. I have periods where I have vacancies. Mm. Um, I don't like... This is a big thing. I, I, I don't like coming out. I like to stay with family. I uh, like to stay close to people that I, I know and trust. Um, it's just, I, I've, I tell people quite a lot that I've lost my way. Mm. I'm not scared of the world. I just feel like I've lost my way in the world mm. and it's difficult. And this is, It's been like this for two years now and I, I can't take it anymore. I need to move on. I need to try and get some of my life back for me, for my family and for my little boy who, who, who can't understand what's happened to his dad. How mm. things have changed for us. Now, we will talk to you about that day of what you can remember in a moment, but you suffered physical injury, didn't you, as well as yeah. any emotional challenges you might mm -hmm. be facing now, um, including a stroke. Um, is that part of what's making life difficult, do you think? And do you connect the two very firmly? Um, yeah, it, it has. It has. I, I mean, when the stroke happened, I had probably about six to seven months where I was uncommunicative. Mm. I didn't... Um, I, I struggled making eye contact and stuff like that. Wouldn't go outside. Um, would sit in the same place in the house, not move. And it wasn't that I would sit and read a book or anything like that, because I can't concentrate that much. Mm. It was just, it was just, like, would just stare shut into down. Space. Mm. And there would be nothing. No mm. communication. We could speak to him and then the next thing, he would forget what we've said. Mm. Um, Marty used to be a very, very outgoing man. He, he would have five and six projects on the go at one time. Mm. He knew where everybody in the family needed to be. Um, appointments, dates, anything that needed to happen for the family. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden from this, uh, from this incident, the whole world changed. Mm -hmm. He no longer wanted to associate with anybody outside. Um, I mean, he, when he said he, he couldn't communicate, he didn't speak to people. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to be involved in people. We had to spend quite a lot of money on security for the house mm -hmm. to make him feel safe at home. Um, you know, everything of our lives changed within that moment. He used to take Max to the football at Newcastle. They used to go and love to go to the matches. That all stopped. Um, it was a complete and utter turnaround mm. in our entire lives. It's just heartbreaking to hear you describe it. If you can bear to me, Martin, what do you remember from the day? Well, I can... It, it's, it's patchy. Mm. Um, I can remember coming out of the stockroom and seeing these two people who were known, who had, had been briefed early on in the day that they'd been in three times that day. Um, and once they saw me, because they know me, they, I asked them to leave, which they put down what they were trying to get and started to walk away. But then for some reason, they stood at the front of the shop and were just screaming and shouting profanities at me. And all I thought is these people need to leave. Mm. And as, as 
I, I made sure I distanced myself from them so that I wasn't antagonising them. Yeah. And I walked away. Um, but when I walked away, I turned around and saw the two girls that were working with me. And they were, you could see it in their faces, they were scared. Of course. And all I thought about was, I've got to get these guys out, I've got to get them out, I've got to make people safe. And it's then that one of them took something else deliberately and I, I took it off him only because it was visible for me to see. Mm. It was it was it was enticement to take it, so I took it, and then it just escalated. And when I turned round, I thought the other guy was going to punch me, so I tried to usher them out. All the way through this, I'm 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 being polite and asking them to leave, please leave, please leave. We had a girl on the phone to the police, but obviously it's. The police aren't held for security. Mm. You know, they can't drop everything and just come at, at a whim. Um, and then it just escalated from there. Your instincts were so human and mm. so right and so brave, you know, thinking of others in the shop, doing your job in the position you have with the store and you've had for decades. Um, and yet you put yourself at so much risk. I mean, when you hear, and we've heard it from various ministers that, that members of the public, because we know there's a scourge of shoplifting, mm -hmm. and also staff, you know, have to take action because the police can't do everything. Um, you know, what do you feel? Would you do it again? What do you think should be done about this? I think that um, there needs to be a law change, mm -hmm. definitely. It needs to be more high profile. And people need to take it seriously. Mm. Um, as we were discussing earlier with some of your colleagues, that mm. pe these people are, are stealing to order. Mm. They do it on a regular basis. It's not because they're hungry or anything like that. Mm. They're doing it be because they are being asked to do it and it's an easy way of making money. And the more we don't deal with it, the worse it'll get. The worse it's get. What, what can, you... What's the... What's been the reaction? Because clearly you could see you worked at Halfords for 40 years, you felt that Halfords was a family, your kids had been part of the business as well, and your first instinct, as Kate said, you wanted to protect your mm. colleagues who were scared, and you can understand why. What's Halfords' reaction been in to what Marty's been through? Um, Halfords have been in touch with us in the way of welfare meetings. Uh, the first one took place about six months after the event. Six months? About six months after the event. Wow. Um, we've explained to them umpteen times how Marty is. We've always been open and honest with them every step of the way. If they've asked for any information, like medical records, we've given them without any, any questions at all. Um, we do feel that everything that we've sp said to them has been used against us at some point. They understand that we don't have a, lo a lot of savings. Um, and obviously, Marty stopped getting any um, mm. wages from Halfords in June 22. Uh, they did extend it by a month, which was... We appreciated that completely. But, obviously, since June 22, it's been myself that's had to mm. support the family. And, and Marty was on a better wage than I am, um, so I've had to take a second job on. Now, Halfords knew that we were very financially strapped at the time and that what we had wouldn't last. Mm. And we feel that every time we've, we've gone to them for extra support or for... He uh, was offered counselling, he accepted the counselling. Um, we feel like they've used what we've said in the way of our finances are not great and, you know, that, um, that um, we, we have had to take on a second job. And they've used that to make sure that when we've been in touch with the solicitors, they've, they've left it to the last minute to reply when the deadline's up. Mm. And then they've asked for an extension and then they've asked for another extension. So what should be a three-month reply ends up being a five- and six-month mm. reply. So every time that we're expecting some sort of a decision on whether or not they're going to give Marty some form of a compensation, we're not asking for, for a lot of money, we're just asking for a little bit to give us some support mm -hmm. for what Marty's been through. Um, and every time that it's come to the decision time, they've just extended it. And then when they've given us a, um, a, a settlement figure, that we've had two weeks to reply to oh. these uh, figures. It, it probably doesn't make you feel, and we, we've got a statement from Halfers as well to balance things, it doesn't make you feel supported, no, does it, by a company that you've given so much for, including 
severe risk of health mm -hmm. uh, and long-term consequences in this instance. Let's just give that reply, shall we? A health health spokesman said, throughout Martin's absence, we provided support, including regular welfare meetings and counselling. We also extended Martin's company sickness and entitlement. Uh, when it was confirmed there was no prospect of Martin returning to work, we followed our correct processes. We believe we acted in a supportive and responsive way throughout the process and we want everyone who works for us to feel safe and secure at work. That's why we ask colleagues to report shoplifting when they suspect it, but never to confront shoplifters directly. Um, that's a tricky one, though, isn't it, the confronting? Because what do you feel the brief was when you were dealing with it? And, you know, the encouragement is to try and do your best to try and prevent people stealing from your store and, and prevent the store that you've got pride in? The issue you have is it's the, the policies that people have have a double-edged sword to them. On right. one page, it's telling you one thing, that you shouldn't confront people. And nowadays, what is confronting people? Mm -hmm. Some people saying a lot of them is confronting them. Mm -hmm. so, so where's the line drawn there? And then the other side of the coin, on the next page, you've got them turning around and saying that theft will not be tolerated, mm. a zero tolerance of any type of theft from the store. Mm. So it puts the onus on the manager to, to take responsibility. Mm. Matty also warned them, he warned them several times that things were getting worse in the store. He even offered different sorts of solutions. Um, previously, they used to have a lot of the items in glass cages which were locked away so that people, if they wanted to see them, they were, they were visible, but if they wanted to touch them, a staff member had to hand them to mm. them for them to see. Mm. Um, but they had a, a big refurbishment in Stockton and a lot of the stock was increased, so the stock values were increased. They, they had other products that were a lot more expensive. Um, so Marty, when things were getting really bad, he asked for further help. He sent them emails saying, you know, think somebody's going to get hurt. He foresaw what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And he said someone's going to get hurt. He even asked, uh, there was a store that was closing just 10 miles down the road from, uh, from where Stockton is. Uh, and he asked if he could have the glass cabinets back so it wouldn't cost them anything. Did you get and a response to that? All he was told was that it was not the image Halfords were wanting to portray. The worst thing about that is you mm. foresaw something like this happening. And it happened to you, Marty. Yeah. Well, look, thank you for coming in and, and, and braving the opportunity to share your story. I think it's such a pertinent story right now, as Kate was saying, with the escalation in shoplifting rates. And there'll be people who are going to work today in retail that are facing that dilemma that That's you've had to horror, face. That's the horror, isn't it? I hope that you coming here is a step towards you getting back your confidence so you can get your life back to where it needs to be thank and you. where it should be. Thank you. Better be brave. Could thank we you. just say, of course. sorry, yes. um, a big thank you to the people who helped Marty. Um, we've never had the opportunity to thank them because we don't know who they are. We were never given any names. We've asked the police, but we didn't get the, the names. People that helped at the yeah. The people in the store that Aww. helped Marty. We, I, I would not even like to think what would have happened if they hadn't have stepped <sighs> in the way they did. So a big thank you to these people who helped Marty out on the day. I couldn't thank you enough. I really couldn't. Gosh, well, fantastic of them too. But Absolutely. we wish you well and keep in touch and we hope things improve for you health-wise and in terms of getting what you feel you need to go forward. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. For the time.